Hello everyone. Hi. Um, okay, so we are here today because we have a lot of questions to answer for a lot of you. Uh, so many of you have think we have lost our minds. So we're just going to <laughs> level with you and have a conversation and let you in on where we're at um, with everything since we announced yesterday that we are speaking with and channeling Rixum and we released our first Rixum video. So this is just kind of a conversation to clue you guys in on where we're at. And um, we realized we didn't really do a great intro at the beginning of this video. So we're actually recording this right now at the end of our conversation. <laughs> so if the lighting kind of changes a little awkwardly in a second here, uh, that's why. <laughs> um, but know that this is completely candid, uh, unscripted conversation that we're gonna have with each other to let you in on uh, our world and the experiences we've had over the last six years, um, but specifically over the last couple of months and couple of days, because we want to bring you along on this journey. So we hope you enjoy. So we are officially one day. One day since launch. <laughs> since launch. Yeah. And uh, lots have has happened internally to us. And so we wanted to talk about it that uh, and, and make it human. We could put some human characteristics behind this that we're not just doing this willy-nilly, that there is intention behind it and forethought and that we have feelings and that we're, we've considered what will happen when friends and family see this, so. Well, first of all, it was a really great day. We've been working on this, um, it, I mean, it's weird, it feels like a long time, but really, I guess in the grand scheme of things, it's not that long since we met Rixum and started going down this sort of path, but yeah. I think that this was the whole thing of, of really when I was trying to figure out how I was going to announce this or tell people on any of our social media channels that have already existed in other formats. Number one for me as a country singer, number two for us creating comedy couples content is like, how do you even bring that up? Like it, it seems so out of left field, no matter what, like there's really no like easy way to just sort of get into this. But then I think that the other part that I've realized over the last little bit is that I had a few people a while back tell me that I'm kind of hard to get to know, which surprised me because I am really outgoing and I know a lot of people and conversation is very easy for me to start and get to know people. But I also do realize now looking back that I have this sort of publicly curated image as a country singer. And not to say that that's not real or that that's fake, it's absolutely real. It's just only a very small portion of me as a person and of my life. And part of this, the thing that people haven't seen or that I just haven't publicly shared with anybody who's not in our inner sphere or inner circle who has hung out with us and had a conversation with us on a one-on-one -on -one basis recently is that over the last six years or so, we really started down this sort of enlightening journey, both from a, a like scientific standpoint, a personal growth standpoint, and what inevitably ended up being a spiritual standpoint. It didn't start out as that. We didn't set out and seek to do that, but we started reading a book and that would lead us to a question, which would lead us to another book and then more questions and kind of down the rabbit hole that we went. Just from a sheer curiosity standpoint and from a standpoint of like wanting to learn and wanting to understand our world better, wanting to understand ourselves better. And so this has been kind of six years of this sort of, of prep kind of leading up to this point. And that has included, um, you know, studying about the practical applications of quantum theory and uh, you know, the science of enlightenment and philosophy and like I said, personal growth. And then that led us down, um, you know, spiritual aspects, studying many different religions and seeing what different um, philosophers or, or lines of belief had to say about our world and our being. And it's kind of all culminated to this point. So for us, it didn't 
while it still did feel a little bit out of left field, it wasn't as, as out of left field as I can understand it seems to anybody that just follows us on, to, on social media. Yeah, there is a climatization <laughs> that, that happened. We didn't just start channeling and we're like, cool, let's go with it. Um, there was this acclimation process that, that started six years ago. And, and we, when we started it, it truly was hearing a fact about physics and going, well, is that true? And then you, you run it up the flagpole. You're like, okay, well, if that's true, right, and you're kind of validating through evidence and, and through scientific research and things like that. So there's literally reading journals and, and whatnot, uh, scientific research about a certain theory. And then when you accept that to be, uh, theory is kind of the, the best guess that science has to explain the natural world, once you have a theory, then it's like, okay, well, if that's true, I've always thought that, but this is kind of challenging it. So what does that mean? And then you kind of go over here to this other space and, and you start asking questions there and you, through research, would come up with a, a conclusion and then that would raise another question. And so it's truly the, the, the cliche of going down the rabbit hole. The last six years was an act of going down a rabbit hole. They yeah. go, okay, well, if that's a hole, what's in the hole? And then, oh, if that turns left and right, what's left and what's right? And, and we ended up, um, this was probably two, three years ago where we got introduced to Esther Hicks. It was a road trip through Alabama down to Florida to, to 30A, if you I think remember. it was even longer than that. Was it um, longer? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I think it was before we moved into our, our house in uh, East. Oh, geez, so, so five years So, ago. yeah, I mean, it was, it was fairly early on. Um, we had watched a, a documentary called The Secret. Um, one of the first books that we read was called Never Split the Difference, which, which is a an right. FBI hostage negotiation book. For business for negotiation. Business. <laughs> um, so, so like I said, you know, we've, we've read something like 500 books or so over the last six years. Yeah. But the very first time I was ever introduced to what channeling was, was with Esther Hicks. Yes. And Esther channels Abraham. And when we were on this road trip and we were listening to the Audible book and the whole intro of the book is kind of explaining Esther's first introduction to beginning to channel Abraham. Mm -hmm. And I, I vividly remember sitting there being like, okay, well that's a little um, out there for me. I don't, I don't really know what that is, but like we've got, you know, five hours on this road trip, so I may as well just like listen to what they have to say. Well, we hit play. We heard five to 10 minutes of it and we had to hit pause. And, and this is the other thing about books we read, documentaries we watch, movies, or even TV shows like The Big Bang. When you get to a, a, a like 30 seconds in, we always hit pause and we're like, <laughs> wait a minute, so what, what are they talking about there? And we always break it down. So we're listening to the Esther Hicks book. So what he's saying though, is that it takes us like five hours to watch a movie because <laughs> yeah. we, we like constantly pause and then talk about this. Every few minutes we're hitting pause because some thought rattles around in our brain. And so we bounce ideas off of each other. And it's one of the most beautiful things about me having a relationship with you is that I'm not exploring this world on my own. And Absolutely. the books that I've read, the documentaries I've watched, and even movies that, that I've watched, I am not experiencing them alone. I am experiencing it with someone who is at the same place in life as I am because we've gone through this journey together, immeasurably valuable to me. To be able to hit pause, ask a question out loud and have someone who is of like mind and, and place in life talk through it with me. So incredible opportunity that we've had and it's allowed us to exponentially grow in this process too. What took us six years would probably take me 20 years if I was doing it alone. Okay. I, I think that just to add to that thought, yeah. 100%, I think that you know I have and always have had this just insatiable 
curiosity for knowledge. I consider myself a constant student and I always will be because I'm, I'm constantly wanting to learn and to have a partner and a best friend in life who has that same level of insatiable curiosity has really allowed us to feed on each other and cultivate that curiosity in a way that has um, created an exponential growth in knowledge and understanding for each other. Especially in a, a world right now that is so polar that if you have an opinion, it's going to be met with animosity. To have someone like you that is willing to challenge my thoughts in a positive and a productive manner versus in a ridiculing and, and unproductive manner, an inhibiting manner. So like not only do I have someone to bounce ideas off of, but we are both so open-minded in, in our critique of what we're learning that there's no judgment and it is just this free space to be able to ideate and, and think about, and that's how we built our businesses um, as well. So to just be able to talk about something that I don't understand, that doesn't make sense, and to be able to have you work through that with me without any judgment is just, it's beautiful. So, digressing, but coming back to the Esther book, we're five to 10 minutes into an audible book, driving in your uh, infinity <laughs> down to 30A for a, a friend's uh, getaway kind of thing. There's a few couples get it, going down there to, to have fun. And she starts talking about channeling extra dimensionals. First time we'd ever been introduced to that. We had to hit pause and go, what did she just say? What? And so for yeah. like 30 minutes, we're like, I don't even know. Like maybe we should listen to something else. That seems out there. Well, at this point, this was kind of towards the, the beginning or the start start of our journey down all of this too. So this was my kind of first foyer into even the thought that there could be extra dimensional beings. I mean, there was a lot for me to wrap my head around in that moment. Yeah. And I have a lot of, of empathy or understanding or sympathy for anyone who, you know, hears about channeling or hears someone channeling and immediately has an adverse visceral reaction to it because I, I grew up in a Christian church. I went to a private Christian school and um, I mean, I, I can't watch an exorcist movie at all. Like, so when I heard about that, my initial thought or fear was about possession because that's what has kind of like, was the fear that was placed in me yes. in, in that belief or in that upbringing. So, yeah, it was a lot for me to wrap my head around. Um, but since we had the time, we decided to listen to the book. And as I started to listen to it, the teachings and the wisdom and what they were saying in that book resonated so deeply with me that I almost... It almost didn't matter what, yeah. how it was coming through. Yeah, I almost like kind of forgot about it or it was just like, okay, well, like that's weird. I still don't know if I understand where this is coming from, but listening to the message, like... This is, this is really good stuff. It was prophetic. I mean, it, it really was like epiphany level wisdom of like, oh, all we are is love and, and we are from source. And like everything just made sense in a way that religions had holes in mm -hmm. my life. Um, so many times I, I would be like, what? I don't understand that. And then the, the answer that I got through religion or, or otherwise never quite satiated my, my thirst for knowledge or like thirst for understanding in a way that someone like Abraham channeling through Esther Hicks was able to answer. Yeah, I mean, again, coming on the heels of, you know, being at the, at the start of sort of the journey of our studies um, and just watching the documentary, The Secret, to foyer into the teachings of Abraham, that really made sense because a lot of what they, they discuss or the main points that they discuss are about law of attraction and um, raising your energetic frequency to be able to align with what you want in life or to be able to you know, receive what it is that you want, whether that's money or love or whatever the case may be. So 
yeah, it was, it was really beautiful wisdom, but all to say that like, I definitely understand, um, you know, any resistance to what that means. There's a lot to wrap your head around. Number one, just to think or realize that we're not alone. And we right now are kind of at the start of this, like there's, you know, been years and years of making people seem crazy if they believe in alien beings and you know mm -hmm. the tinfoil hat thing and all of the kind of pop culture things that have um played into essentially a lot of knowledge being kept from us um and you know only in 2020 when there's a global pandemic could the government basically admit that there's aliens and nobody really and we still <laughs> didn't hear it like the, the media was literally yeah. saying, the government is saying that those UFOs, now they're calling it UAPs, is just a distraction, were in fact not of this world. And nobody heard that. Yeah. And we're just sitting there like, they're admitting that there is extraterrestrial technology. Like they weren't saying they were extraterrestrials, they were saying this technology is not of this world. And no one went, Where's it from? <laughs> yeah. We're all just like, okay, right, whatever. Like COVID, you know, more important, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Mind blowing. Big distractions. Um, and and look, the, the government has been doing that, like sliding in subliminal messaging that like there is, there is contact that that the government has with extraterrestrials, that there is technologies that they are reverse engineering since at least the eighties. There, there's government documents that talk about remote viewing. Remote viewing has been a thing that the US government and Russia was doing in the Cold War to compete against each other to figure out where their nuclear warheads were. And that is public domain. That is accessible to anyone who has the know-how to search for it. Yeah. So, and, and that is very much tapping into frequencies of you know, telekinesis and, and remote viewing and all of that are, are all tied to certain higher vibrational frequencies. Like you had mentioned about higher frequencies with law of attraction um, that exist that the government is willing to acknowledge. And, and so it's not as outlandish as we think, but pop culture has found a way to make it an irrational thought to believe that there is life outside of Earth, even though scientifically, the odds of us being alone in this universe, the odds, the probability is so infinitesimally small that to believe we're alone is the crazy thought. Well, I saw a TikTok yesterday. Um, it was Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he was interviewing a woman um, and I, I don't remember what her name was. Um, I'm sure it's on his TikTok channel. I'll see if I can find it and I'll link it in the comments if I can. But she, he was asking her how much of the universe have we actually searched for extraterrestrial beings or for life outside of our planet. And she said, if you take the vastness of the universe and you quantify it down to the size of the world's oceans, that the amount of space that we have searched, if our entire universe is the size of the world's oceans, we have searched one 12 ounce glass. So she's like, if you ask if there are fish in the ocean and you go, hmm, let me go and put this glass in the ocean and you lift it up and you look at it like no fish in there, you can't say that there's no fish in the ocean because there's not one in your 12 ounce glass of water because that's what we've actually looked at. Well, and, and I remember growing up in high school, the, the norm that science taught us for determining whether life exists outside of Earth was the presence of water. The science scientists have now come out and acknowledged that there is water on Mars. Our next door planet has water and therefore the ability to sustain life. Right. And that's our next door planet. We haven't even gotten out of the solar system. We haven't even gotten out of the galaxy, like the super cluster of galaxies. It, it's just, it's, it is truly comical how pop culture has made it normal to think that we are alone and irrational to think that we are not alone when 
the, the, the science, the data doesn't support us being alone. Yeah, I mean, but I understand, you know, you've got an uphill battle here. Uh, hi, Lulu. Hi, Lulu. Um, we, had, we have a visitor. <laughs> She wants to join in on the conversation. Here, do you want to go to your bed? <laughs> I don't know. She wanted to be up and then she wants I'm to not a cuddle. What she's Get doing. Off. Back to it. Now that we've had that little dog interruption, it's fine. Yeah, there's a lot of layers to this. And and this is obviously um, you know, just the start of a surface level conversation that we are going to get into in a lot greater detail in further sessions or episodes where we're sitting here breaking this down. But all of this to say that that there's a lot to understand and there's a lot to unpack for people when they hear for the first time what channeling is. And there's a lot that has gone into us getting to this point of being accepting that 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 what was once seemed or believed to be just your mind thinking things is actually guides and extra dimensionals communicating with you because tele telepathy, the ability to communicate with each other is merely vibrational frequencies that you're, you can pick up on. And, and that is a, a normal way of communicating outside of the, the verbal speech. And so like to be able to pick up on all of that, it, it was a long process to get us to being accepting of that being a reality through our studies of, of quantum physics and quantum uh, entanglement was paramount in that that ability to communicate across galaxies as well. This idea that if you take a particle, split it in two, send one part of that particle to one end of the universe and send the other one to the other end, put a spin on that particle, this particle will simultaneously spin and react to that, even though it's across galaxies, time and space. And, and so just that idea that things can all be connected um, and that we can actually communicate with extra dimensionals and, and all of that and really tap into what it, you'll come to know as the Akashic Records that, that holds the, the records. One of, thing at a time. <laughs> all right, bathwater. <laughs> bathwater, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think... Look, jumping, jumping back a little bit to just something even a little bit simpler. We have what we can visually see with our eyes. And what that is, is our light, our eyes picking up the wavelength or the vibration of light and our brains interpreting that into an image that we describe as sight and seeing our visible world. But there are a lot of different waves of light that our eyes can't perceive at all, like x-ray vision or all of these, these different wavelengths that your eyes can't pick up on in any sort of a way. But those are things that scientifically we understand, have been taught, and that seem very normal to us. But really, all vision is is your brain interpreting this information, energetic light information that is coming into your brain through your eyes. Same thing with your ears. So telepathy is just another form of energy and a different way for your brain to interpret energy that is around us all the time that maybe we just haven't been aware of as a human species yet. And that seems so outlandish to us because nobody talks about it in in like really real forms yet so yeah over the last couple of days it's been really exciting to release all of this but at the same time definitely um a pretty vulnerable place to be in to be coming out with something that is so new or maybe off the wall for some people who obviously weren't ready for it because how do you how do you segue into this from what we typically create in terms of content you know well society has a way of um making something new seem crazy 
Like if it challenges the status quo, it's crazy in the beginning. Um, and, and we see that time and time again. And when uh, uh, the CEO of, of Apple, uh, Steve Jobs came out and said, I'm gonna create a phone that has your entire life on it. It's gonna have camera, it's gonna have apps and, and all of these things, your phone is gonna be your life. Like everything you need is gonna exist on your phone. People are like, that's crazy. And then he put it out there and people started climatizing to it and were like, oh, this is actually brilliant. But it was ridiculed in the beginning. It, it sounded outlandish and foolish and, and society has a way of doing that. And so knowing that and knowing that our message and, and the, the manner in which we're conveying this message is going to be new to people, instinctively people are going to have an adverse reaction to it in the beginning because that's just how society operates like if you're challenging the status quo it's it's crazy yeah um and and so like we kind of expected that um but and it also to friends and family does seem like it's coming out of left field because we've been kind of in our own little container learning this and and a select few friends during COVID or something were hanging out with us. We had our little COVID pod, right? And so we were, just because there was nothing else to do, willing to talk about quantum physics with them and, and things <laughs> like that. And so there was a select few people in our lives that, that knew we were even researching quantum physics as one subset of the, the greater picture of what we were researching. So when friends and family heard for the first time that you're channeling and that there's a message and, and all that uh, coming through, that was the first time they even knew that there was a journey that we've been on. Yeah. Um, and, and so I guess we turned these cameras on, really wanted to, to just kind of let people in on how we got here a little bit, that this wasn't an overnight thing, that this has been, in process for a very long time. Yeah, and I think the other thing about this too, um, you know, while we were studying, kind of opening our mind up to these different possibilities and thinking about how our universe worked, still at no point did we, or I specifically, I'll speak for myself, I think that I was going to be channeling. No. This was not, not like something where I was like, let me like do a seance and call in these extra dimensional beings or like, I mean, that was not, not the case at all. Um, and maybe I'll just let you guys in and kind of tell you the, the story of how it all started anyways. So it was two months ago and um, Jake and I have a really wonderful, beautiful energetic coach that we work with. Um, she's very talented, very gifted. And we were um, in a session with her, we were doing a guided meditation and um, said that I was going to start receiving messages and that they had removed some energetic block on my throat and that I was supposed to start using my voice. And as a singer, I was just like, okay, well, I guess that means like music or like I, mm -hmm. something's gonna take off with that. Like, I don't really, okay, whatever. And just sort of moved along. So coming out of this session, it was about two hours later that all of a sudden my throat started twitching. Like if your eyelid gets a twitch, like it just involuntary twitching. And I was like, that's weird, what's my throat doing? Um, and then it kind of started twitching again. And I was like, I don't really know what's happening. And then I just kind of heard this little voice in the back of my head, which, you know, everybody has an internal dialogue sort of that they have with themselves. It was just like, just go with it. Don't be afraid. And I was like, all right. So I just sort of closed my eyes and stopped resisting against the twitching that was happening in my throat. And I began speaking in white language, something that like was not English. And I kind of opened my eyes and I was in the bedroom at the time and I came out to Jake who's sitting on the couch and I was like, babe, uh, something just happened. Like, what, what's this? And he was like, well, what do you mean? And I was like, well, I don't know. Let me see if it, if I close my eyes, does it do it again? And sure enough, it did. <laughs> and from your perspective, what was that like? Uh, 
God, my mind was racing. Uh, we have it on tape. Like I, I pulled out the phone almost immediately, but you were essentially making clicks and pops, which reminded me of when Will Smith in Men in Black is communicating with an alien and he starts beatboxing to communicate to him. Uh, that was like the the kind of like guttural throat kind of undulations that he was making and like the clicks and the rolling of R's and like all of the things that, that you can do with your throat and, and tongue and, and voice that I know you can't do because you can't roll your R's. I, I really can't. Like I can't, I can't roll my R's at all. It's so weird. All of that started happening and you were doing this like thing with your throat that like I was worried you couldn't breathe when you were doing it so I'm sitting here like are you okay like involuntary spasms this doesn't seem normal so but we also by this point had had seen enough people who who do channeling work that like I was quasi sensitized to it uh or desensitized to it well we at least had an idea Idea of what was happening we had enough knowledge in the tool belt so to speak to be like okay well so this is interesting but but at least hadn't heard channeled text before or had an idea of what channeling was and had some sort of a concept of how this could work so um, yeah I mean it was strange it felt a little weird at first we were kind of looking at each other like okay what is this what, what is this? And there was no coherent language, but it, it was clear that it wasn't just random because yeah. there were like these very beautiful like clicks and guttural sounds that just sounded like a language. And so I was able to like ask questions randomly, well not randomly, intentionally, and there were pauses and responses like I was being communicated with. So at that point we knew this is some form of language. And yeah, growing up in, um, you know, Christian church and going to a Christian school, I had heard people speak in tongues before, um, or heard of people speaking in tongues. And my experience of that in the church was that someone would speak in tongues and then someone else would interpret, like just be, um, you know, would understand and that somebody else would stand up and interpret for them. And so when I was speaking in this, this light language, I was like, well, how am I supposed to find somebody that can interpret this for me? Like, cause I don't know, I'm supposed to be receiving messages, but like, I don't know what, I don't know how to speak this language, whatever this language is. And Jake had the idea after about two or three days of this kind of light language just coming in and out, um, that I should just ask if they would translate into English, if they could translate. And so I closed my eyes and just was like, can you translate this into English? And they responded through your vocal cords in English, we are ready when you are, essentially. Yeah, I was like, are you ready to hear our message? Are you ready saying? for the message? We're ready when you are. And I'm like, I'm holding the camera and I'm just kind of laying back on the couch because we were watching the country music awards or something like that. And so like, I'm, I'm lounging, but also like filming. And then you started speaking in English and you can hear, audibly hear my gasp. Like, oh my God this is a breakthrough, yeah. like a monumental breakthrough. Not only are we recognizing that something is communicating with us via a language we don't understand, but now I'm able to communicate with them and understand them. And yeah. it was an audible shock to me. And it was so funny because I was like, oh yeah, okay. And I do one of these and I'm like, God. and my videographer mind, because we've been doing content creation for years now, my videographer mind is like, I can't sit in this position for very long because we had the couch rolled out, the height of bed of the couch rolled out. And so I'm like in this really awkward spot. No way am I gonna be able to hold for more than like a minute. And let me, yeah, I'm ready. Thinking like, I'm gonna miss my opportunity. So yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> and he sat over me saying, 
we'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, and I turn on the camera, and I get all positioned, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm super, I'm so excited. And I didn't even get into a comfortable spot, but I got to a manageable spot. Yeah. And so I, I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. And they're like, okay. And they start talking to yeah. me and responding to questions. And, um, you know, for the first, oh, a couple of weeks at least, and, and we're communicating with them as much as we can, but like there was a connection process. It, it's like if you're, oh, what's a good analogy, but um, just like fine tuning the radio frequencies to, to sync up and to make sure all the wires are connected right. Like you get static and stuff like that if wires are crossed. And, and so like it was truly like every time we talked with the Rixum, it got stronger, their voice got louder, more clear, and more like their personality shining through instead of this kind of just like stoic, you sitting there cross-legged. Yeah. Um, but that was, that was an incredible time. Absolutely. And, you know, looking back on it now, now realizing um, the strength of the connection that's been built over the last two months versus when I go back and watch some of those early videos where... You know, day. Oh yeah, where my voice is really quiet and whatever, but we were so excited. I mean, literally we're like, we have like the universe's knowledge at our fingertips. And you know, the first questions we're asking are like, how are the pyramids built? And like all the crazy questions. And they're like, can you guys just chill out for a minute we'll so we can, we can like get the connection strong enough? Yeah, at one point they're like, you need to slow down with the questions because you're asking them too quickly. Like we need time to respond. I'm like, okay, but like, <laughs> I want to know everything. I know. I have so many questions. It, it makes sense now because at that point I was like, are they just not wanting to tell us? But now I'm saying, oh, we just needed time to kind of like build the connection. Yeah. I think the other thing that um, I've been asked the most is how do you know that they're not evil or leading you astray or yeah, like, or some sort of like a dark entity that's coming through. And it's a valid question. Like I, yeah. I have that very same question. Absolutely. We had that question. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, growing up in, in Christianity and a Christian upbringing to... And in pop culture and with it, the exorcist and things like that. Absolutely. Like that was something that I was very much like, um, is this a thing? But um, I think one thing that's really important to know is that we live in a free will universe and that any sort of dark or negative entities can try and trick you, but they cannot lie to you. If you flat out ask them, they cannot lie to you. And so we went through a lot of due diligence to make sure that we were asking, like, who are you? Are you here for our best and highest good? Are you here for the best and highest good of humanity? Which I do think it's important to point out and clarify um, and, and Erickson talks about like, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater when it comes to religion. There are valuable components to religion that are worth mentioning here. Um, because your grandparents pointed it out when we were talking to them, they, that they know through Christianity and through teachings of, of the Christian faith, that evil spirits or, or negative spirits can't lie to you. That, that's a part of Christianity. Mm -hmm. a, an acceptable part of Christianity where there's demons and angels versus extra dimensionals. Um, that's where it kind of gets off, off kilter. But the idea that if a spirit is working with you and you ask them a question, they have to answer it. Like that's, a, that's an accepted belief in, in Christianity. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the next step of that, so like the first step was just asking and us, yeah. you know, going down that whole path. But then the secondary aspect and something that is a bit more um, subjective or intangible is just the feeling the, that their feeling, the feeling of Eryxum is, is so light and beautiful and love filled and joyous that like it just lifts you up and raises your vibration. And 
you can tell the difference from a very like practical standpoint or just I think a pretty maybe normal or accept acceptable standpoint for most people is thinking about how it feels to walk into a room where people are angry with each other and they've just been in a fight. You show up at a party and you walk in and you're like, ooh, cut the tension and lean out with a knife in here. You're, you're feeling energy, that's what you're doing. You yeah. walk into some place that's just, you know, a city that's just won the Super Bowl and you can feel the electricity of the city just being on this high. You can feel a difference between when someone is loving towards you or when someone is angry towards you. And I think I think a lot of people will resonate with that when uh, with certain analogies. Um, for example, anyone I talk to, anyone who's not a light worker that is good at reading energies, when they go to Dachau, we went to Dachau in Europe, mm -hmm. and when you walk into a concentration camp like that, you feel the heaviness, the negativity, the, the death that surrounds that place. And then you compare that with walking into the Basilica, the Sagrada de Familia Basilica in Barcelona, Spain, where it's a light temple, like they built it to be this light temple with like columns looking like trees and it's just beautiful and alive and you walk in there and it just feels so loving. People feel those places and, and that's extreme, I get that. But that is a great example of what you're able to hone in on with communicating with any of these beings is if they're coming at you with hate and negativity, you feel that like it's Dachau. <laughs> and if they're coming at you with love and positivity, you feel that like it's the Basilica in Spain. Absolutely. I mean, I think that actually using extremes like that makes perfect sense for anyone who's, who's just beginning to feel energy. Mm. Um, I've always been more sensitive. I'm, I'm included in that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I've always been more sensitive to energy, even, you know, when I was a kid and before any of this happened. But since this has happened, my ability to feel energy has grown exponentially. And, and that partly is just because now I can feel the difference between my own energy and the energy of like Rixum or another guide that is coming to me. And humans, we've just been, we haven't been taught to read energy. We've been taught to really use our minds. We glorify our minds and our minds are an integral part of our life here, but we also have forgotten that our hearts also have just as much feeling and our heart is almost its own mini brain. It has so much electricity that comes from it and we just haven't been taught to tap into that. So tapping into energy in a very extreme sense like Dachau versus the Basilica of Light, you can, you can feel the difference and if you start to pay attention to those things, you will be able to pick up on more subtle differences in energy. I mean, it's, it's you can use that with anything. I, I'm not as good of a basketball player as the people playing the NBA Finals right now because they practiced. Right. Right? And so energy work is just like playing basketball. You're not going to be good just walking on the court and thinking you're going to hit three-point shots. It takes practice to get good at that. It takes practice to be able to read energies at the level at which you're able to compared to someone who's walking into this for the first time. Um, and, and I love you bringing up like the, the mind and, and the heart because there is just as much, if not more electrical signals being sent from the heart in, in humans, and this is scientifically proven, just as much electrical signals, communications coming from the heart to the body as there is coming from the brain to the body. And there are neurons in the heart like it's actually functioning almost like a, a brain and it is autonomous and it sends communications to the brain more than the brain sends communications to the heart. And so when you think about just what does that rationally mean that if the brain is the center of the body, but then the heart has a lot of the same composition as the brain, then surely the heart, which is where feeling is located, there must be something to that. Like I'm we so wouldn't glad. just have neurons in the heart 
just willy nilly, the evolution uh, weeds out the things that are unnecessary. That's why we don't have tails anymore, but we still have remnants of the tail, proving that we had at one point a tail, <laughs> but we don't have a use for that anymore. So like through evolution, it, it has gone away. Yeah, I'm so glad that you brought that up. It's the Heart Math, Insti Heart Math Institute that has a lot of these studies, um, really, really fascinating stuff. But that's, you know, it's not just cliches when we say to follow your heart or to trust your gut. Your gut also has knowledge and an instinct and a brain, so to speak. And we've just been taught to only value this brain mm -hmm. and to not come into our heart center, to not trust our guts. We turn that off because logic and reason in our society is what is the most valued at this point. And so going back to practice, if all of our practice is using the brain, the brain is going to be a stronger tool for us than the heart. The heart has less neurons than the brain does, but the heart sends electrical signals up to six feet in diameter around our bodies whereas the brain is only like one or two feet. So the heart is actually stronger in sending signals too. Absolutely. And so there, there's something to be gleaned from that. And, and I'm sure if there's not already scientific research like demonstrating what purpose that might have for why a heart would send a signal farther than the brain, that will be coming out soon. And that's probably something we can ask Erickson. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to ask them about this. Um, so circling back around for yeah. how we, we got onto this point of the topic is that energetically speaking, um, you know, I can feel the difference between something that's a negative entity and something mm -hmm. that is a positive entity. And there have been beings that have come to me that I've been like, nope, not, not my energy. Nope. You've and, and immediately they will leave and depart. So um, you know, there's, there's really nothing to fear, even though that is, um, I think maybe hard to believe or stomach for some people, but I really equate it to, um, turning on a light in a dark room. Light is going to win over dark every single time. If you flip on the light switch in a dark room, light illuminates, dark goes away. Period. It's not like the dark can fight back, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what it is here, too. We, we don't have anything to fear. Our pop culture has made us so fearful of this thing. But we, we hold so much more power than we think. And love and light will always win every time. Yeah, fear and darkness have a lot of correlation. Um, and I, I say that because the majority of fear is based on unknowns like our fear of death is probably the most gripping fear that humanity has and death is something that can't be predicted it's sometime in the future and and we don't know when it's going to happen and the fear of the unknown that at some point we're going to die i don't know what's going to happen after i die i don't know when i'm going to die like that whole thing that, that just grips humanity and fear around death is all about unknown it's what you don't know and darkness it's dark you can't see in the dark and so again when you sit in a dark room at night like if you went into a haunted house and it's dark you don't know what's around the corner because you can't see what's around the corner so you're gripped with fear and yeah. so fear is just about the unknown and, and darkness is a great synonym for fear because you, you can't see one foot in front of your face in the dark but the second you turn the light on, you realize, oh, I'm just in my apartment and there's nothing here. There's nothing to fear. Or when we learn about what happens after death, which I have a, a sneaking suspicion that will be one of our topics of conversation, it, it takes away that fear of the unknown because once you know, there's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I think we kind of touched on this earlier, you touched on this earlier in our conversation, but on that note, bringing it back around, we as humans historically have a tendency to shun away from anything new that is something that is the unknown that we don't understand. And 
you know, time and time again, you know, it, it kind of comes back around. Each generation looks back and is like, oh, we're, we're so much more open-minded than they used to be. Mm -hmm. And every generation, <laughs> and then the next generation is going to be more open-minded than we are. But every new idea is, is sort of persecuted or anything that people don't understand is persecuted. And, you know, so if this is triggering for you in some sort of way, if, if channeling is triggering for you in some sort of way, I think the thing is just to ask yourself, why is it triggering you? And maybe you're just not ready to like hear the message or maybe this just isn't for you and that's totally fine. Like love and light still, you know, awesome. If you ever want to come back and listen, great. If not, no big deal. Like, you know, we, we don't want anything. We are just providing knowledge that has impacted our life in a really beautiful and positive way. And if that can help somebody else's life too, then that is amazing. And that is our whole point and purpose in this. And so if it's not for you, great. But if you are triggered by it and you are still here watching this for whatever reason, maybe ask yourself why. Like, And once you can get past the initial fear, that like initial bodily, like nervous system fear that is going to come up in you naturally because it came up in both of us, yep. it really did. And so again, totally understand. But once you can get past that nervous system fear, then ask why is it really triggering you and see if you can get to the core of what that is. And that will probably give you a lot of insight into yourself in general, whether or not you decide to continue listening to these messages or not. Um, definitely worth listening to one of Erickson's messages in, in which they, they speak about that. Um, that when you go internal, um, on something that you, you, you're trying to make a decision on and you go and listen to what your heart says, your heart's going to provide the answers. But an important step in that process is to strip away all of the norms, the societal norms, the expectations, what your parents told you to do or what your friends are expecting you to do, all of that, take all that away and just go inward and think about how does this make me feel? Mm -hmm. And when you do that, sans all of the other influences that are out there, the, the, the pressures, the norms, the expectations from everyone in, in your spheres of influence, when you take all of that away and just go inward, that's where you will find truth, you'll find answers, you'll find questions. And those questions are meant to be followed. If you have a question that seems outlandish and, and you don't feel comfortable telling your friends, that's fine, but don't ignore the question. You can prevent yourself from telling them what the question is, but don't ignore the question because if you're internally asking a question, then chances are you're meant to know the answer. So go find the answer. Yeah, I think another important point kind of, um piggybacking on that point is that we are still learning and growing right right along with you <laughs> like this is a, a very new connection for us and for as much as we've you know read books or studies like I still consider myself brand student. new yeah and a student and and learning things all the time I was talking to my best friend and you know, she watched the first episode and I was like, what do you think? And she goes, I mean, honestly, I have a lot more questions. I was like, me too. Heard. Me too. <laughs> like every time we speak to them, Jake and I have an, an ongoing list of questions that I'm just like constantly Tons. writing down and being like, okay, well, if this, then, then what about this? And if this, then what about this? And so, you know, we're by no means perfect or we don't have all the answers. Um, you know, I really equate this to us just being able to, you know, open a book or tap into, you know, well, here, we'll just bring it back around. Tap into the Akashic Records How here. How dare you <laughs> overflow the bathtub with water? 
Um, yeah, I, I mean, we're, we're very much students and we have a plethora of questions. And I, I think one of the, the beautiful things about us recording all of this is that we want to bring you along our journey in hopes that it helps you with yours. Um, we are not here as teachers telling you what the truth is. That's your job to discern what the truth is. Don't let anyone else tell you what your truth is. Mm -hmm. That is yours, that is sacred to you and only you. And no one else owns your truth. And so we merely hope to be a beacon of light, to give people the latitude to be able to go and research, search for the answers for themselves. Um, because we have a history of, um, society has a history of, of hiding the answers or safeguarding the answers or protecting them like there's some intellectual property about what is life are we alone what is the what are we doing here and, and all of those questions that just continue to go unknown and unanswered you have the opportunity to go out and research these answers for yourself and, and so hopefully this just gives you the freedom to be able to do that on your own um, because we are. And, and so if we can be an example, the example I hope that we can be is that it's okay to ask questions and to go seek answers. And um, also I think it's just cool to like see someone's journey. Um, and so you guys get to follow us on our own journey. Absolutely. I mean, you, you said that so beautifully so i just i'm gonna leave it at that <laughs> ditto because yeah um you you really hit the nail on the head with that last comment um yeah like you know we are we're just seekers we're just people that had questions to ask and had curiosity and went down the rabbit hole so to speak i never um I certainly didn't plan for this to be the path or the journey. I mean, again, country singer, couples comedy content. I think, you know, some people are maybe wondering if this is a joke because we do a lot of pranks and stuff. And no, so I'm like, yeah. I'm sure somebody's sitting there going like, well, surely they're going to come out that this isn't, this is, it's, it's very real. Um, but yeah, like, you know, don't take our word for it. Take it into your own heart and your own consideration. Do your own research. Look for yourself. Discern for yourself what's real or not. And if these messages or what we're saying resonates with you, great. If part of what we say resonates with you, great. If the rest doesn't, then leave it. Like take what you want, leave what you don't, and and make sure that you are out there asking your own questions and discerning for yourself. Because at the end of the day that's the most important thing is what you really feel what you truly believe in your heart to be true and because you believe it to be true not because somebody told you it's true that's the biggest key growing up in in any sort of like religious upbringing and you and i both had religious upbringings mm -hmm. you are told that this is what it is and it's this 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 and this and if you stop and you just take a second and think, what do I feel about this based on what I know to be true and what I've researched and what I've read versus somebody just telling me what I should believe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, specifically when powers that be tell you how you should think, feel, behave, that is a method of control. It is power it's a power struggle and typically those in power are the ones telling you how to do something so that they can retain their power the government tells you how to behave so that they can control you literally they say don't steal that way we're not out there pillaging you know and, and things like that so um so yeah, to that point not all forms of control are, are negative forms of control no but but it is forms of control. So discerning what are yes. the good forms and what are the not good forms. Yeah, I, I mean, we in the United States all collectively said, okay, the government's in power. They're going to set all the rules that we all live by so that we have standards and we're not murdering each other and you know stealing and, and things like that. So 
there are powers that use control methods of telling you how to behave that are meant to be good. I think our government got a little off track, but um, when you stop and discern what you believe to be right and wrong and how you want to live your life and what is truth to you, we're all unique. We are all different. I don't think anyone would disagree that every single human on this earth is different and unique. That means we're not all held to the same truths. Well, yeah, and we're all we're all souls. We are all energetic beings here for a very short period of time experiencing this life, and we all have our lives that we're walking we all have our lessons that we're learning here we all have our experiences that have shaped us and not one of us is going to have that same set of experiences or upbringing or perspective on life and the world mm -hmm. and a lot of times especially now with social media, there's so many things that just do kind of this blanket statement of like, this is end all be all truth and you must fit into mm -hmm. X, Y, Z of a box. And that just, that could never be the case. I, I'm reminded Vantage Point, the movie, it was a great movie to use as an oh, example. Is that Denzel Washington? I think so. That was And, a and it, it's about like a sniper or something and like everyone from different Vantage Points saw something different about that I think it was like an assassination attempt on a president or something like that. But the, the gist of that story was that everyone is seeing the exact same experience or, or the exact same event from a different lens. And we interpret the experience differently based on our preconceived notions. We might've gone into that event angry or happy and elated. Maybe we just got proposed to, or maybe someone just broke up with us. And so like, our energies that we bring into the situation change how we interact with the situation. But then our different vantage points of the exact same event will be different because of how we're seeing it. And so even the same experience is being experienced differently. Actually, we have like a very firsthand account of this from just a day ago. We were walking down the street to go to the grocery store and, oh, yes. and we passed this woman and her dog on the street and we had our dogs with us also and we were going to go into the grocery store and I was like, oh, excuse me, can we take our dogs into the grocery store? Because we had just seen her come out of the grocery she, store. Yeah. And she goes, oh yeah, of course. Have it's a great a, day. Have a great day. It said hello to the dogs, was very sweet and kind. And we go up to the grocery store, she walks the other way and there's these two guys that are like intently watching us have this interaction in a very odd which sort had of me way. questioning can i bring my dogs in there did she just lie to me because they're looking at me weird so, <laughs> so we walk up there and the guy goes you're gonna invite her to thanksgiving and we're a little perplexed like, by should this I? do like, i know her yeah what do, you, what do you mean and apparently this woman had just been terribly rude and like shoved one of the guys and was like gonna get in a fight or something and we're like wait the woman who just said have a nice day like i'm really confused so all to say that our interaction and experience of this person was completely different than what these other two guys had had, had with the same person. Yeah. So yeah, your experience in this world is going to be completely different than anyone else's. And so don't let anybody, including us, try and fit you into any sort of a box. But just as importantly, like recognizing that we're all having different experiences and we're all experiencing each other differently mm -hmm. You might catch me on a good day and someone else might catch me on a bad day. And when they hear that you like me, they're gonna judge you for it. Right. The lesson there for me is, you know, and, and uh, going back to Christianity again, is let the innocent cast the first stone. We should not be judging each other because we are all uniquely different. We come from different walks of life, different upbringings, different spiritual backgrounds. We had a different experience today individually, and we have different experiences of politicians or, or friends or whatever. And so when you hear someone thinks a certain way, embrace that, allow that, enjoy that. You don't have to believe the same things that they believe, but don't judge them for how they believe because you, you didn't walk that mile in their shoes. 
Yeah, I think it's it's just extending each other compassion and mm. um, empathy. Yeah, I think I saw a meme or something one time, and I just I loved it. And for whatever reason, it's silly, but it, it stuck with me. And um, anytime I have a little bit of road rage, I think about it. And it's like imagine that the person driving slow in front of you has a um, a goldfish in a bowl, and they're trying not to spill the water with the goldfish. And I was like. Okay. Or maybe yeah. there's a baby on board, like it, yeah. Who knows? Or the person that goes flying by and cuts you off. Maybe they've their <laughs> wife is giving birth in the hospital and they're trying to get there. Like allow them to be the asshole on the street. Yeah, absolutely. Just extending grace and kindness to each other because we we don't all know what we're going through, and especially right now with social media, if this is any indication, like you you see a very curated image of people that is put forward sometimes and again not to say that that's not real or that they're faking it um, because I, I certainly wasn't faking that part of my life but there's a lot of my life that I just have kept off of social media mm -hmm. so you know ex extending each other that grace and kindness and love in those times yeah so maybe this is a, a plea for you to understand where we're coming from a little bit that and and that was the the gist of this is to just let you in on our experience what we're going through and and bringing you along for the journey is that we're having our own experience and we're wanting to share that with you because uh i think Erickson and some of the other guides have some amazing messages and we hope you learn something from it again if this content doesn't resonate with you you don't have to listen obviously if parts of it resonate and others don't throw those other parts out um uh, but we're trying to trying our best to be as real authentic as possible in sharing the experience that we are having with extra dimensionals with our guides who have a message to convey to anyone who's willing to listen. So judgment-free zone, um, our comment section is not for those that have any negative things to say about anyone. Uh, there, that is just not allowed in this community that we want to build. This is love and light. And so if it resonates with you, great. If it doesn't and you hate this message, just keep scrolling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we love you guys. We have have been documenting this entire journey from the very beginning and we are going to begin to sift through hours and hours and hours of footage from the last couple of months um, and, and begin to put that into um, kind of a journey that is digestible that we can share with you and bring you along for the ride. But um, yeah. Thank you for listening and thank you for all the um, the messages of love and light that we have received from you. Um, those of you that have been open-minded to this, I am forever grateful and we love you guys so much and stay tuned for more messages. Thanks guys.